my tip was actually around Microsoft To Do. And I think we have briefly touched on this in some of the other sessions that we've done, but I want to specifically talk about a key feature in Microsoft To Do today called My Day. Now, if you're not familiar with Microsoft To Do, it is Microsoft's newer and brighter and more fabulous task tool to the old Outlook tasks that you might have been using over the years. So it actually started life as something called Wonderlist. It was a, another product and Microsoft bought it a few years back now and developed it into their tool. So it does have some integration with Outlook and everything, but specifically a part about it I love, which I think makes it really quite unique, is this part called My Day. And the idea of my day is that every day you get a fresh to-do list, like you open it up like this and there's nothing on it. So it means every day you actually give thought about like, what do I want to get done today? Now, because the, 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 um, the opposite to that is that we carry over a list day to day to day and it gets either really long or it, it can get quite overwhelming and it's not focused on what we just want to do today. So how to-do works is, you still have what I call like a master task list. So I've got, for example, tasks down here as my master list. But every day I think about what I want to focus on just that day. And it will actually give you suggestions based on your master list, based on dates, based on what you didn't finish yesterday that you could add. So if I add these three particular things in here, you'll see these are my three things for today. And if I don't tick them all off, it will clear overnight and I'll get a fresh list tomorrow, but it will suggest the things I didn't finish yesterday is the first things today. So it just helps you reset and refresh day to day. So that's the My Day list on Microsoft To Do. Now over to you, Adrian. We don't have many more people coming in, but let's just give these lovely people that are here the last tip from you. I'll certainly screen, share my screen. So let me jump that one there, go share. Just let me know what I'm on through. Got it. Yep. Sweet. Alrighty. So my last tip is around the whole idea of um, being able to create a PowerPoint really quickly and easily. Often we will uh, we might be building something out inside Word because we're really um, familiar with that, and that's the that's the platform that we're using. And then suddenly someone says to us, "Oh no, we really need that's great. I love what you've done, but I'd really like it as a uh, presentation, please." That'd be great. And you go, oh, my goodness, how the heck do I do that? Well, in our, let me see if I can find one that's going to be nice. There we go. There's our cake one there. Now, actually, what I might do is I'm going to show you how to upload. Let me upload a file for you, my cake one that I did before. Here we go. Ripper. So I'm just uploading my new cake formula, which is fantastic. And I'm going to open it up inside my web version of Word. Now, it only works in the web version at Word at this current time. So I've got some stuff here. I've done some planning for my cake day. I've got some images, and it's all really good to go. And suddenly someone says, oh, that's great, but we, we just would like it as a presentation, please. Oh, my giddy aunt. But if you come to File, Export, I can export this into a PowerPoint preview. Okay, the Excel PowerPoint preview. So let me go watch this. If I go export to PowerPoint, it goes, oh, we're going to get that. And it looks at the words inside my document. Okay, so it's looking at that and going, okay, this is what you've got here. Here's some suggestions we've got. Uh, looking through here, that doesn't look like much like a cake day. No, that's a bit bland. But this one looks pretty good. Look at that. Yeah. If I then go export, it's going to grab the text and the images and the words from my Word document and convert it into a PowerPoint for me. And it's applied a style to it automatically. See, now you can see I've got this one here, my first slide. Second slide's all done for me. And it's got all the gear that I need. In here, there's my English faculty. It's grabbed other images in there. And look at this. It's actually built it out really quickly for me, super quick. And I haven't had to do anything about it. And it's really, really good. So that's grabbing anything from a Word document and bringing it across. Contextually reads it as well as grabbing the images. It then will use the designer tab to say, you know what? Oh, look at this. This looks pretty good. This might be really nice as well. So that, that's a bit, bit of a better one. I'll change it around because I like that style. So I can change the different styles. Actually, I like this one better. Look at that one. Um, to match what I want. And it's all being done automatically for me. Now, the other thing I can do from here as well, I'll come back to here, 
is I'm in my cake day planning one. It's really good. I'm really happy with it. But I'd really like it to export it somewhere else. So if I come to export and go transform to a web page, what it does is it checks to see what I've got into my account and then goes, hey, look, I can build this into a sway for you. Oh, that'd be great. That looks really nice. If I go transform, it automatically grabs my text and my images from my Word document, brings it into Sway and converts it automatically for me, like I did before where I uploaded and brought it across. This way I can build out my, my slide or my, my Word document better before I build it through. And now I've got all these things popping in. It's being animated automatically for me inside Sway, and it's coming straight out of a Word document like I did before, but it's coming there via a different method.